One of the longest running jokes throughout the League community is that of ADC in 20XX. Originally, it started in 2017 when major system-wide changes were made to crit items. In retrospect though, that was really detrimental for the Marksman class's effective performance, even though the intention behind it was to make AD carries have power spike timings more consistent with everyone else at the time. Of course, now we have the introduction of Mythic items, which after 10 years, finally granted some semblance of early game usability for the ever so frail and dependent Marksman class. But even now, it wouldn't be too big a stretch to say that ADCs host the weakest individual champions of them all, losing to just about every other class in head-on single combat besides maybe enchanters. That said, when you account for the sheer amount of damage output members of the class are capable of dishing out after acquiring the necessary items, it's not unreasonable to put them in such a weak state early on. There are very few champions who can match the DPS of a max crit, max attack speed AD carry, hence why they're called attack damage carry. Interestingly enough, while the player base collectively agrees that only those from the ranged marksman class can be given the term EDC, there's a small yet conspicuous number of melee champions capable of itemizing crit chance, and it just so happens that all five of them are notoriously frustrating to balance and or deal with by the general player base. What's even more ironic is that they each have tools designed to counter ranged champions. Today we're going to analyze melee AD carries, and why they're the reason the marksman class is always weak in their early to mid game. To start, what exactly does the term attack damage carry even mean? Like, is it a champion that builds AD or is it something else? ADC is an archaic term referring to a champion that deals strong continuous damage with basic attacks and scales with attack related stats, i.e. attack damage, crit chance, and attack speed. Since then it's been retired from official context and replaced with marksman to distinguish between ranged auto attackers and the ability to carry. So for the sake of this video, an ADC is someone who builds attack speed, crit chance, and or on hit effects of some sort. It's commonly used to describe the Marksman class due to most if not all of their damage consisting of auto attacks. That being said, there is a group of melee champions well known for dealing high damage through attacks as well. The Skirmisher subclass, which is for all intents and purposes the melee ADC. While not every champion builds crit items in that class, a good portion of them do, and regularly find success doing so, namely Trindamir, Yasuo, Yone, Master Yi, Viego on occasion, and though he's not considered a Skirmisher, Gangplank. Despite being melee, these six champions are able to incorporate crit items into their build by virtue of their innate kits, sometimes even more efficiently than the class those items were intended for. The three most noteworthy examples are the ones you saw on the thumbnail of the video, Trendemir and the two wind brothers Yasuo and Yone, who exclusively build crit items and even have built-in crit synergy. Trendemir was for all intents and purposes the first true melee ADC to ever exist. His passive Battle Fury literally gives him free crit chance based on his fury, and his playstyle consists of hitting you over and over and over again until you die, just like a marksman. Since he receives a complimentary 40%, he needs only 3 items to reach max crit chance as opposed to marksmen who need 5. Yasuo and Yone are a bit more nuanced, though they lean more on the side of spellcasting than they do auto attacks, the bulk of their damage stems from crit strikes thanks to Steel Tempest and Mortal Steel, which are AoE attacks that can critically strike. Not to mention their signature double crit passive allowing them to reach max crit chance with just 2 items. The other 3 melee ADCs have had an on and off history with crit items. Master Yi had an on hit phase during the Sated Devourer and Old Gwinsu's Rageblade back when it had a Tiamat passive, and at one point people were building him full lethality with Dustblade and Collector. I mean they still do now, but these days you see him itemizing some degree of crit items thanks to Alpha Strike having crit scaling. Viego as well, he has multiple different builds, but here or there you might run into someone who runs a very aggressive Kraken Slayer Infinity Edge Essence Reaver build. Main reason being, his Q and Ultimate both do increased damage with crit chance. Finally Gangplank, who effectively has a ranged auto attack every few seconds with Q, which when used in conjunction with Powder Keg gives them arguably the most powerful single instance burst attack in the game. Case in point? So what exactly separates melee champions who want to build crit items over those who don't? Why do Master Yi and Trinomir build crit while Jax and Irelia do not, even though the four of them are mostly known for auto attacks? Well, there's nothing in particular that stops Jax and Irelia from building crit. In fact, the latter's mythic of choice is Immortal Shield Bow, though to be fair, she builds it not specifically for the crit but because of the lifesteal and burst protection. As previously stated, crit items were explicitly designed to only matter once you have a lot of them. What gives Marksman a weak early game while other physical damage dealers have a strong one is because the only metric in their kit that grows stronger is typically auto attacks. Let's take a look at Vayne. You're not really going to get that much more power from your Q, W, E, and Ultimate as you would from your auto attacks. 
Condemn has a high cooldown and low base damage. Sure, if you knock someone into the wall, the damage is pretty significant, but that's really one ability, and no one thinks about it for the damage. Everything else ties in with her auto attacks. In contrast, someone like Vi has multiple abilities that improve off of one item. Her Q, W, E, and Ultimate each grow stronger, thus getting more value out of a single purchase because four things improve as opposed to one. To offset this, auto attacks get stronger through a multitude of ways. The first is standard attack damage, seeing as each auto attack does 100% of your total AD as physical damage. The second is attack speed, how many times can you apply 100% of your total AD as damage? The third is on hit effects, any supplementary elements that apply with each basic attack, such as Blade of the Ruined King, Life Steal, Kraken Slayer's true damage bonus, so on and so forth. And lastly, Crit Chance, which amplifies the amount of damage you do with each auto attack by 75% or 110 with Infinity Edge. That's what causes auto attackers to eventually outpace ability casters. There are several ways to increase the efficiency and damage output of an auto attack. TLDR, spellcaster champions scale linearly while auto attackers scale exponentially since they get stronger through not just one stat but many. Where melee ADCs fit into all of this is that they essentially have all of the privileges of ADCs and melee champions. Traditionally, when it comes to game design, range is inversely proportional to durability and speed. When you think about archers, mages, snipers, zoners, or any class with the ability to exert pressure from a far distance, it's compensated by having less durability or mobility. As an analogy, we can look at Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Characters with short effective range such as Fox and Captain Falcon usually have very fast attacks and strong rushdown as a means to reward players for closing the distance on their opponents. Conversely, characters with long effective range like Sephiroth and Ike have noticeably slower frame data and physics. It forces the player to make up for the slower speed with their disjointed hitboxes. It's for this very reason that fighters like Roy and Mithra are considered to be some of the best characters in the game as they have the benefit of both range and speed. Obviously League is not a fighter, it's a MOBA, but fundamental principles remain the same. Marksmen have very long effective ranges, and the potential to overwhelm anyone so long as they keep a safe distance. However, if their opponent manages to get within close quarters combat such as a member from either the fighter or slayer class, their advantage is rendered null and void, and will almost certainly lose to a melee champion as they can kill you faster than you can kill them. That's the thing with Marksmen, their only true defensive asset is their range. In a pinch, Vayne's Condemned, Jinx's Flame Chompers, or Silver Spell Shield can buy you some time. But 9 times out of 10, it's nowhere near enough to deter enemy engage, and they won't be getting that much help from building items either. Since they have to focus on building 3 offensive stats, damage, attack speed, and crit chance, they don't have the luxury to build health, armor, and magic resist the way fighters can. And they shouldn't. Imagine if Caitlyn had the same survivability as Jax, that'd be pretty unfair to say the least. While it takes them a long time to finally get going, by using your long range resourcefully, you can buy yourself enough time until you reach that point. Now, take the incredible damage scaling and itemization of a marksman, apply it to a champion who is both fast and a little more resilient and you get melee ADCs. They can dish out staggering amounts of DPS, while equipped with other tools that ranged AD carries don't have, such as more effective forms of defense and damaging abilities that do just as much as their auto attacks normally would. Additionally, since they get a little extra help through their base kits, they can power spike much earlier. Furthermore, all of them can easily gap close on ranged champions. The very existence of melee ADCs bottlenecks marksmen and their itemizations from being good. Apart from Gangplank, Yasuo, Yone, Trindamir, and Master Yi have been a problem ever since the introduction of mythic items because whatever ranged marksmen can use well, melee ADCs can use even better. Immortal Shield Book gives counterplay against assassins for marksmen, while on Yasuo and Yone it makes them near invincible. Kraken Slayer lets you deal with tanky opponents, on Master Yi and Trindamir it makes them two-shot everyone. Basically, you can't balance crit items around marksmen, you have to balance them around those five champions first. People have been clamoring for years to give Marksman a meaningful early game so they can actually do something with only one or two items. And finally they got their wish, to some extent. ADC mains no longer have to wait until 4 or 5 items to start carrying games, they can do it after 2 or 3. However, in doing so, Yasuo and Yone's 2 item power spike now became a 1 item power spike. Trinimir can outduel virtually anyone with just a mythic item, whereas before he needed 2 or 3 to actually start beating the crap out of you. Sure, the Wind Brothers deal 10% less crit damage, but if you ask any ADC main, they would surrender 30% crit damage if it meant getting 100% crit chance in 2 items. Okay, if that's the case, why not balance melee ADCs in the same way as ranged? Why do they have melee based stats despite outscaling almost everyone? Why do they get so much damage with just 1 or 2 items whereas Marksman need twice that amount? Why are they allowed so many concessions? It seems a little gratuitous for them to have the best of both worlds. The words burn my tongue as I say them, but they can't survive without that stuff. Range is one of the most powerful combat stats in the game, even in spite of how every champion these days is a million dashes. The only way you can damage your opponent without any risk to taking damage yourself is through range. 
If you're a melee champion and you want to hurt someone, you're gonna get hurt back. That's why Tryndamere has his Q sustain, Yona gets a shield from W, Yasuo has Windwall and his passive, and Mashii has Meditate. Dashes allow those with short range to get close to a long range attacker, but their effective range is still short, meaning they have a very small window of opportunity to dish out as much damage as they can, which is why they also have front loaded burst elements. If they fail to kill you during that small window, their pressure literally goes from 100 to 0. Yana does have a ton of gap closers, but if he accidentally steps on a Caitlyn trap or gets condemned into a wall, he's as worthless as a cannon minion. Then what about the free crit chance they get? Why do Yasuo and Yone get max crit with 2 items, or Trinimir gets it in 3 items? Once again, they can't afford to wait until 4 or 5 items to get going. Melee ADCs have to share the same lanes with Juggernauts, Divers, Skirmishers, Assassins, Mages, champions with very strong 2 or 3 item power spikes. They have to match that, otherwise they'll lose every time because they don't have the range. Contrary to popular belief, the 2.5 times bonus crit chance Yasuo and Yone get are actually necessary for them to remain competitive. If you take that away from them, pardon my French, but they're actually f The longest they can get away with building full damage before it becomes a problem for them is 2 or 3 items. After that, they have to start building things like Guardian Angel, Death Stance, Wit's End, or stuff like that because by that point, Marksmen and Mages are starting to reach their power spikes. In other words, all of their balance problems stem from the fact that they're trying to make crit chance, which is a late game stat, work in the early to mid game. In a sense, melee ADCs are much like stat checkers. They won't last 5 seconds without all those stats and benefits, because they can't physically keep up with spellcasters. Remember when I brought up the comparison with Vi? Building attack damage on Vi improves all 4 active abilities in her kit, while building attack damage on Yasuo really only improves his Q and ult damage, much less power spike per item. Crit Chance doesn't make his wind wall bigger, or Sweeping Blade faster, or Last Breath do more damage. For Trinimir, Crit Chance doesn't make his Q heal more, or his W slow you more, or his ultimate last longer. All it does is give his E back a little faster, but that's not enough. They have to be this overinflated just to function in their respective environments. Consequently, and predictably, that's what leads to them totally dominating the game come mid to late game. I don't think I need to explain just how ridiculously overpowered a max item Trindamir, Yasuo, Yona, Master Yi, heck, even Gangplank is. I know I didn't really talk about Gangplank that much, but he's a bit of an odd case. Just earlier, you saw him one-shot a full HP Annie in a single barrel. What are you supposed to even do in that situation? How can a marksman stop a Yona from wiping them off the face of the earth before you can get even one auto-attack in? That's the design problem with melee ADCs, and why they're single-handedly preventing marksmen from ever experiencing the feeling of being relevant before 20 minutes. In simple catch-22 fashion, if you want marksmen to be strong, it makes melee ADCs overpowered. But if you want to balance melee ADCs, then marksmen will be complete garbage. There's a reason that in almost every other game, there are design constraints put in place to prevent unconscionable things such as this. It doesn't matter the genre, these rules are universal. In fact, that's something League of Legends has been struggling with as a whole. They continue to release champions that are sort of able to do everything. Not saying you can't think outside of the box. For example, Vex is an anti-mobility mage designed to counter divers and assassins who otherwise counter mages. Once in a while is fine, but it shouldn't be this many times. Melee ADCs, while small in size, are still growing. Viego and Yone came out very recently, which leads me to believe Riot might potentially release more melee ADCs in the future. I'm not against it per se, but it's a huge reason why Markson are permanently kept weak in the early game relative to everyone else. Granted, it's not the only reason. Like I said, being a ranged champion automatically comes with a lot of benefits that should be compensated elsewhere. I don't think we should give a hyper carry like Vayne or Kai'Sa the same early game as a Lee Sin or Rengar. But what do you guys think about melee ADCs? Do you think they should even be allowed to exist at all? In my community post a while back, I noticed a good number of comments that said Yasuo and Yona should not have crit scaling at all, and they should just be regular skirmishers like Riven or Irelia. I don't disagree with that actually. Trendemir should just be reworked. Master Yi, Viego, and Gangplank are viable without going crit. So the Wind Brothers are the only remaining holdout. Although crit chance is such a core part of their kit that it feels wrong to just take it out too. It's a tough hole to get out of. On the other hand, maybe I'm just over-exaggerating on how much melee ADCs affect crit and balance. If that's the case, then feel free to call me out on that. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribed. Consider following me on Twitter, joining my Discord server, and checking out my other group discussions after this one. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon in the next video. Take care.